Today we're going to find out if it's possible to beat every gym in Pokemon Yellow with a different Pokemon while also playing on minimum battles. With no trading, no items in battle, no other nonsense. Every time we beat a gym, we have to immediately stop using any Pokemon we've used up to that point, and we have to get a new wild Pokemon to complete the next section. Now this is a variation on what's been called the Baton Pass Challenge. It's something that I think was originally done by Pokemon Speedruns, but I could be wrong on that. But I was put onto it by the RBY Pokemon Challenge's Discord community. They decided to do this challenge in Pokemon Red and Blue, and they found a lot of really great strategies, but it raised the question whether or not this could be done in Pokemon Yellow. Because let's face it, in most cases, the late game of Pokemon Yellow is much harder than the late game of Pokemon Red and Blue. This is especially true in the cases of Blaine, Giovanni, especially Lance. But there are a lot of other spots that are pretty different between the versions. So I decided to put my expertise in this game on minimal battles to the test by trying to beat the game by only catching one Pokemon before every gym and seeing if I can somehow manage to make this work. Let's get into some rules. First things first, we are attempting to beat the game on zero DVs and minimum battles, which means we won't gain any additional experience against optional trainers or wild Pokemon. In essence, no level grinding. We can get experience from required trainers and rare candies only. That's it. Everything must be completed in any single cartridge and no in-game trades or legendaries. Especially in-game trades with extra experience would just completely break this challenge. No items are allowed in battle other than Pokeballs so that we can catch the next Pokemon for our team. And no more than one Pokemon can be used in battle in each section. With one glaring exception. You see, Pikachu is absolute trash. It cannot beat Brock on minimum battles no matter what you do. It's not even possible with struggle strats, which means we have to catch one Pokemon before Brock. But every other section, we're simply going to use one Pokemon, no exceptions whatsoever. As usual, there's far too much for me to get into in a single edited video, so I've linked a live commentary of the unedited run in the description below. If you have any questions why I used a particular strategy or what I was thinking at a certain time, you can always just check right down there. Now, this is just showing one possible strategy that might work to beat the entire game, but I'd love to hear your comments. If you think you have another strategy or another Pokemon that would do good in this section, let me know in the comment section below. With that being said, let's get into this challenge proper by picking up our trash Pikachu in Pallet Town. So here we go. Let's start the game. We're gonna get a Pikachu. We don't really care about this Pikachu. No matter what this Pikachu does, he's gonna be dead to us before the first gym. So don't worry, <laughs> he's gonna be gone. This Pikachu, he's worthless, he's nothing. Okay, so here we can just go ahead and start off by getting this one here, nice. Um, Yeah, we're gonna name him Trash Chew <laughs> because we're just gonna throw him away before the first gym. <laughs> so here it doesn't really matter what we do. We can, we can win this, lose this, it doesn't matter. This Pikachu, never going to see the light of day against Brock or anybody else. So we will use it to win exactly one more fight, which is the Viridian Forest rando guy. But that's just because we have to get through that in order to get the Pokemon that I want. Some people might be like, but what about a Pidgeotto? You know, Pidgeotto, it's fine, but it's not what I'm going for here. But first, Editor Teo from the future here, coming back to clarify a couple things, because based on the first 14-15 hours of this video having been up, I realized that I didn't explain this section quite enough. So let's break down the options that are available pre-Brock. First, you might think is Mankey. It's fighting type, and it should have a type advantage here. Nidoran Male, doesn't that one also learn double kick in this section? And then finally, Pidgeotto the highest leveled Pokemon that is available before Brock, and it also has access to sand attack strats, so it should be able to win eventually, right? Well, let's look at each of those options one by one. Starting with Mankey. Mankey is at best going to reach Brock at level six. That's way off of what it needs in order to get low kick, because that doesn't come in until level nine. And what that means is that while, yes, we could technically beat Brock eventually, he could miss 5% of the time with tackle, 
we've got about the same odds of winning the lottery, getting struck by lightning, and getting eaten by a killer whale all at the same time, than beating this fight. Nidoran Mail is more of the same, the only real difference is that it gets to level 7 going into this fight, and it's a 3 hit KO range. But we wouldn't get double kick until level 12 anyway, so yet again, Nidoran Mail is basically impossible. So that leaves only Pidgeotto. And you might think, well, Pidgeotto will win eventually, right? It's got sand attack and it should just be able to eventually get a run where it doesn't get hit at all by these Pokemon. There are two problems with that. Number one, we don't outspeed the Onix. And number two, Bide ignores accuracy checks. What that means is that even in the best case scenarios, we can never prevent taking damage completely. On top of that, we don't have enough PP in Gust in order to actually knock both of Brock's Pokemon out. And that means that we end up having to use struggle strats. So once again, while this is not technically impossible, it's actually completely terrible. Now there are some easy wins if you're willing to take optional battles or to use a small team. In the original minimum battles run that J-Rose did on his channel, the entire setup revolved around using the Pikachu to set up Tail Whip and Growl, and then letting the Pidgeotto use its sand attack strats and knock out these Pokemon, because once you get six Tail Whips on them, you actually have the ranges to knock them out. Alternatively, taking only three optional battles with a Mankey does turn out to be enough for it to reach level 9 and get access to Low Kick. You just fight the three optional bug catchers in Viridian Forest. And with Low Kick, this is now an incredibly easy fight. But I said minimum battles. And if we're going to beat the game on those settings, we're going to have to get up to some shenanigans. But there is a consistent strategy for getting through this section without any optional fights and without having to use multiple Pokemon in battle. I have a better plan. A far better plan, in fact. Here we're just gonna go Thundershock on the Caterpie. We paralyzed it, it's perfectly fine, and we just win. There we go. So the Bug Catcher goes down, and we are about to get ourselves a real Pokemon. Here, let's sell some potions so that we can buy the Escape Rope. Yes, a look at this. It's time for my master plan. A look at that. Four times speed, I have the timing down, okay? You know what? There's a really good solid strategy for this. Okay, so here we can uh, basically just spam Tail Whip until we die. Perfect. Good. We gained no XP there, so that is not a battle for my rules at least. We can save the game and there's the Gengar. Nice. Now it's time to start chucking some Pokeballs. There we go. Oh, Gengar. Nice. So we've got the legendary Gengar itself which means that it's now time to uh, take old Pikachu. We're going to heal up, but then we're going to box this Pikachu. We're never going to look at him again. He's trash. So trash Chew goes away. We've got a level seven Gengar here. Oh, look at this. So here we can save the game and let's fight Brocky boy. Okay, so here, um, I'm going to confuse Ray here first. And of course, Geodude can do literally nothing to a Gengar. So we're just going to lick it. And I guess just keep it confused. Just kind of saving the Nightshades for the, uh, whatchamacall. But I guess Nightshades perfectly fine here too. Okay, easy win. Here we're faster than Onyx, but we can lick it and paralyze it too, just because we can. Oh, look at that. <laughs> He's just getting paralyzed. And, you know, if he uses Bide, we'll just uh, use Confuse Ray on him. Here, let's just Nightshade because we can. Oh, well, now his HP is so low. We can just easily win. Look at that. Gengar, legend. Absolute legendary Pokemon here. So with Brock going down, we now have to decide what to use in the next section. And technically, we don't actually need any more shenanigans here. There is a solution, a Pokemon that is actually available in this section of the game. But really, there's only one legit option if you're not going to take optional battles. Pidgeotto. You see, while the Discord community told me that they got through this section with the Nidoran male, it's incredibly inconsistent. The level 6 Nidoran male gets hardwalled just by the first bug catcher. 
Now, Spiro might seem like a good option because it can get through that bug catcher, but then it struggles on the first youngster. It's really only Pidgeotto that is consistent here against these trainers, given that it has a relatively high level already, has sand attack strats to fall back on, and it will even learn Quick Attack by a level up in this section. The only problem is that it's only 1% to show up in Viridian Forest, so if you didn't get lucky enough to catch one already, you're going to be grinding here for a little while. Now, I can't possibly show every attempt that I took with every Pokemon in this section, but I tested all of this pretty extensively. There's a four hour live commentary of my first attempt, also linked down in the video description. But the long and short is this, if you're going legit, make sure that you get a Pidgeotto. But if you're willing to bend the rules a little bit, there's actually an even better solution. Gengar has served his purpose, so we're simply going to uh, withdraw this trash to you again. We're going to deposit the Gengar. It's level 10. We no longer need it. Um, let's just see. I think I can trainer fly again, can't I? Oh, look at that. Just trainer fly on him again. And uh, here we just need to fight some rando trainer. Here, this trainer's fine. And uh, here, let's just spam tail whip until we die. Okay, so no XP gained. Let's just see. I'm interested to see what we get off of her stat. Oh, execute. Nobody wants to execute. That's trash. Okay, so we want something better. Voltorb. Not really in it for the Voltorb. Let's run away there. There's a slow bro. Nice. Here, I'm just going to use a couple of thunder shocks on it. To get his HP down. And there we go. We get our slow bro. Nice. So we have kind of cheesed the early game here. Because now Slowbro, I think, is pretty darn good for this next section. So here, a Trash Chew goes into the PC. He's outlived his usefulness. We can save the game. And time to start getting through this next section with our Slowbro here. So we know Confusion, which is obviously a same type move as well. So we're not faster than anything, but I don't think it really matters because we're going to just, you know, sit here and use confusion to wreck things we're obviously under leveled to what we normally would be with a slow bro at this point but it's fine so here let's save the game and get ready to fight the super nerd with slow bro there he goes and we can just go confusion twice there easy i think even headbutt's good here nice three hit ko there and here nice two hitter there perfect perfect we get to level 13 let's make sure that we have set battle mode on since we're not going to be swapping our pokemon around so here we can save the game just before jesse and james and here let's just see if we have enough hp let's go okay so jesse and james time uh obviously i think we just go confusion here easy here confusion does decent damage, smog misses, tackle doesn't do enough, and there we go. Jesse and James went down without too much issue. Now, in this section, we want to keep in mind that there's not really anything good to catch in if we just go fight Misty immediately, so we're not going to. <laughs> we have the option to go and fight Rival 2 first, and that is the play. Basically, we just throw away our team every time we beat a gym leader. Fortunately, Rival 2, not a gym leader. So, uh, yeah. Okay, now Sandshrew, I can just go Water Gun. It's a two hit KO, but it does work. Level up. Nice. And we're just so bulky that we can take a lot of damage here. Okay, we get growled, but that's fine. We just need to hit one more time. There we go. So Zane Winter, 12 months channel member. Thanks for your support, dude. But uh, we had to beat you there. We had to beat you with our slow row. All right, so now we can progress right on up here. One thing to note, why do I consider this legit? I know some people are probably, you know, pulling their hair out like, come on, cheating, cheap. But these Pokemon were legitimately available in a cartridge without a Game Shark. You could do this. And that's where I kind of draw the line on what is legit, what's not legit. If you could do it legitimately in a cartridge, you know, without, you know, a Game Shark or something tied to it, to me, it's perfectly legit. You can disagree with me, that's fine, you know. And there are certainly other options. You can go Pidgeotto for Brock. You can try to go the Nidoran strat for this section of the game. Of course, you'd already be making that Nidoran into a Nido King at this point. I think it works. 
but I prefer this strategy. I think this one is the most fun, the most interesting, you know? Okay, so now we can save Billy Boy, no problem. He's just, you know, kind of hanging out in mom's house, doing weird stuff. He doesn't want it out on the streets, what he's doing. That's why he won't go to the party. Okay, so here we want to progress through this next section of the game. We do, still don't want to go fight Misty. We basically don't want to fight Misty until after we complete the SSN. Or uh, let's re let me rephrase. We we can, don't want to complete the SSN, but we do want to get to the SSN. All right, so there we go. I'm going to heal up here in Vermilion, actually. You know, I know I can't dig out now, so too bad, but... We're buying a bunch of repels because we'll need them later. But for now, it's time to come over here and we need to find a very particular Pokemon. The one, the one Pokemon that we need. And this is kind of a hard section because we need a very specific level on this Pokemon. So we're just looking for the level 19 Drowsy. That will be our Pokemon for the next section. Okay, we're getting low enough on health here. I guess we just start trying to catch it. There we go. Okay, so we got our Drowsy. Nice. That's going to be our Pokemon for the next section. Here, let's just pop up north now. Now it's time for Misty. And we're just so defensively bulky here. Look at this. She's only going to want to use Tackle against us because smart AI, you know, Tackle or Harden. Okay, now that she's used a lot of Hardens, I'm going to switch to Confusion because it just does more damage. There we go. Misty. Easy win. Easy, easy win. Okay, so uh, Slowbro has run his course, but he can use Strength. He can use Surf. So keep him in the team. It's Drowsy's turn to come out and be the new lead Pokemon. And uh, this Pokemon's going to go ahead and fight rival number three. And we just wanted to gain XP, basically. Just all the easy XP, please. And again, we're staying on minimum battles or technically minimal experience. Here, let's save the game now. Let's get up here. So here we want to put this... This one to sleep. And now go Confusion and Confusion. Nice. Here, I'm going to Thunder Wave this one. So that we attack first. There we go. We'll stick with Confusion here, okay? And Hypnosis on the Eevee. Confusion, Confusion, Confusion. And he goes Growl, so we win. There we go. So we get to level 20, easy. And we have beaten that one. Perfect. Now, if we encounter a, a Doug Trio in this section, we will catch it. So I'm going to Repel right here. And yeah. Okay, so there we've gotten this one down fairly low, and there we go, we catch the Doug Trio. We just want that one for Lieutenant Surge later. We're not going to fight Lieutenant Surge right away, of course, that would be stupid. Here we can go ahead and just teach Cut to our good old little Charmander here, because what we want is this TM right here, yes. So we gain TM42, which is Dream Eater, which we can go ahead and just teach to our Drowsy. Okay, so here we save the game. Let's fight the Rock Tunnel Hiker. And here, oh, that self-destruct just wrecked me. We need the sleep. We need these guys to go to sleep. We are just missing all the hypnosis and then he's using self-destruct. He can use any of his four moves. He does not have to use self-destruct here. Okay, let's just see. Does Confusion, okay, Confusion does not one-shot. Graveler, we put it back to sleep, cool. Dream Meter almost takes it down. Nice. We get it down there. So now we're not going to go fight Erica. We have better options later on for beating Erica pretty easily. Instead, we're going to come right here and uh, fight this guy. Where, yeah, that should be easy as long as he stays asleep. Nice. There we go. That's how much stronger Dream Meter is here. Plus, it heals damage. Oh, look at that. Get to level 25, easy game. And it's Jesse and James time, let's go. So Jesse and James, I mean, are just gonna be a matter of basically hypnosis there. Dream Eater, nice, come on. There's the hypnosis that I was looking for and the Dream Eater, it's not quite a one hitter, okay. Hey, and there we go. Easy win, 
Okay, so there we'll evolve into a Hypno, perfect. And here, let's, uh, I guess just full restore because we can save the game. Let's fight Giovanni now. Come on. There he goes. Sleepy sleep. Hey, okay, Rhyhorn goes to sleep. Nice. Persian will outspeed us. But as long as it doesn't wake up. Yeah, easy two hitter. There we go. We level up to level 27 right there. Now, the whole point of this Pokemon, the whole reason why we wanted a Drowsy so bad is because we really want a Psychic type Pokemon for this section of the game where access to Psychic type moves, especially a same type Psychic type move, really helps a lot. Like against these channelers that are just about to come up, it's pretty good to have the Psychic here. Okay, here I think we just go up here into the Pokemon Tower. And let's fight Rival 4 with our Hypno. Okay, here we're just gonna go spam Confusion on this Magnemite. Can use some Confusion on the Shelter. There we go, we put Sandshrew to sleep so we can Dream Eater it, perfect. And here, or we can Headbutt the Eevee to death even. There we go, easy. Get right up here. I think we just go confusion. Yes. And confusion. Easy. Let's fight Ghost Marowak here. I outspeed Dream Eater. Oh, look at that. Look how much damage we healed up off of that, too. So there we go. We get a level 29 Haunter coming out after us. Here, I want to catch this Haunter if I can. There it is. Okay, so we catch the Haunter. We'll use that later, too. Okay, so let's fight Jesse and James here. Hey, we finally put it back to sleep, which means Dream Eater one shot. Cool. Hey, we put Arbok to sleep, and Dream Eater once again is a one hitter. We outspeed Weezing, put it to sleep, and Dream Eater one shots. There we go. Get to level 30 right there. All right. And here we can go ahead and get the Poke Flute. Nice. Okay, so here we go. Let's try Rival 5. Let's just see if we can get through him. Okay, we put Sand Slash to sleep. Dream Eater takes a two hitter to knock it out, but that's fine. Okay, here we get confused, which is not good. And here we can't hit Hypnosis for our life, my god. Oh, and then he immediately wakes up too. There, we finally get him back to sleep. Get ourselves in confusion though. There's the Dream Eater that I was trying to get off this whole time. Two hitter, cool. Okay, we land the sleep there. There we got terrible luck with hypnosis. We need better hypnosis luck than that, but otherwise I think we can win. Like we're coming in without full PP also, so there is that. But we do manage to knock that one out, cool. Okay, there we get Cloister to sleep and we can just knock it out like that, cool. Okay, we put Magnet on to sleep. This one's a little bit more bulky, so... Okay, we do get the two-hitter on it, though. We're not too scared of Kadabra, and Headbutt does the job there. So now Flareon, we put it to sleep. Oh, it immediately wakes up. Goes Sand Attack. Oh, man, come on! We had it asleep twice, and we couldn't land a hit on it. That's what makes me really confident that we can't actually do this one. Okay, so we knock Sand Slash out again. Get a withdraw there. Clamp. Like immediately wakes up and then starts clamping. Okay, so we get it back to sleep here. Looks like a three hitter there, actually. Oh man. Like we were all the way to Flareon there, too. And here, I mean, we get a stand attack turn one. Definitely not what we're looking for. So yeah, this fight's just a little bit tedious, and I'm not taking the turn one sand attack, no way. Just not accepting it. I refuse. Or the turn one miss and the turn two sand attack, also not taking that. We need we need the luck to actually land the hypnosis. Come on, now he's just like sand attacking every single first turn. There we go, that's more like it. And then withdraw. Hey, okay, here, I'm just going confusion here. Just trying to knock him out. Cool. Okay, so we knocked that one out. Cool. 
he misses his sand attack this time and he stays asleep so we get to land some dream eaters on him and now i think confusion yes there we go that's what we wanted to see because now we're gonna just go beat giovanni and have him be done and that will end Silphco, so that will just leave Sabrina here. And that's kind of the point, right? Like, we don't expect to have a ton more battles in this, honestly. So here, Dream Eater will allow us to heal back up. Okay, we put Persian to sleep. Dream Eater goes Screech. And it got confused, so that was good. We put Ry or Rhyhorn to sleep right away. He guards Specs. So he basically is just giving us, oops, come on. Uh, and we just couldn't land the, the hypnosis there. I should have just knocked out that Rhyhorn. I just misclicked and chose Dream Eater a second time. There we go, we get Needle. Oh, come on. I just said, there we go. And of course she immediately wakes up. Like the, the bad luck of that is just stupid. Like. It's even odds for any length of sleep uh, between one and seven. So to get a one turn sleep is incredibly unlucky because you're just as likely to get a seven turn sleep and then just completely destroy them. But no, I'm getting all the one turn sleeps here. Hey, Needle Queen, stay asleep this time. Hey, okay, there we go. And Confusion finishes it. There we go. So we do beat um, good old Giovanni. It was just tedious. Yeah, I've still got a hyper potion. So I'm going to go into this fight intentionally poisoned. Let's just save the game right here. Let's just see how this goes. Okay, there we go. Get this Venonat to sleep and easy one hitter. Hey, Venonat 2 goes to sleep. And once again, we can just Dream Eater, get back to full health. We outspeed here, Dream Eater. No problem. Now, this one will use Leech Life on us, but if it doesn't wake up, we can Dream Eater here. Oh, and look at that. Easy, easy win. Now we would be able to learn Psychic here. I will just learn it because I can. So that does it for that section. The Koga section, super duper easy. And I already technically have my next couple Pokemon for the next couple sections. So nothing to worry about there. Oh, we caught a Tauros. <laughs> he, he wanted to join the squad real bad. There are a couple Pokemon that I am interested in if I find them, like this Parasect right here. Come on, catch, damn you, catch. We did not catch the Parasect. I wanted the Parasect for a very specific fight. Okay, there's another Parasect. Oh, we do catch the Parasect this time. Okay, could be useful. We, we already have the most obvious Pokemon ever for beating Lieutenant Surge on the team, of course. You know what it is. I know what it is, right? So Hypno can no longer be used in battle. It's fine. We have a Doug Trio to use in battle instead. There it is. Okay. So here we go. Lieutenant Surge time. Let's go. Oh, look at that. Dig <laughs> the easiest fight in the history of the world of Pokemon. Oh, what a what a chump. And that means that Do Duo can now fly us around. And uh, so I'm going to react to that by I'm going to actually put Hypno back out in front again. And uh, we're going to surf and we're going to use some of these super repels here for a minute because we at least want to go down to Cinnabar and uh, try to handle some business here. Perfect. There we go, we catch that Grimer. Nice. I want that Grimy boy. Uh, you are not the Raticate that I'm looking for. Here, we're just gonna headbutt this one as low as we can get it. Okay, there we get the Muck that I was looking for. There's one more Pokemon I wanna catch here, but it's the level 42 version of Raticate which is down here somewhere. Oh, level 43, in fact. There we go, we get the Raticate right there. Perfect. So now we can just dig out from underground on a fainted uh, Dodrio or 
Doug Trio, rather. So now we have a bunch of fights that we can take. But the first one that we're going to take is right up here. So the game plan is to go in and just destroy uh, Erica here with our level 38 Grimer. He does no sludge and he does no minimize. So here, sludge one shot there. Nice. So here, let's save the game. Let's go ahead and fight Erica. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to simply move Sludge into the top slot here. Sludge is like a two hitter here. And then like the Weeping Bell. Okay, it can go Sleep Powder on me, I guess. Okay, she's going lots of Sleep Powders on me. So that just makes me think the best play is just to set up Minimize here on the first uh, Tangela. Because it can't really do anything to us out, you know, like Bind and Constrict, but they don't really matter. And we can just reach the point where we outspeed, you know, look at that. So now we've minimized all the way. And now we've got badge boosts and attack too. So we're just one-shotting all of these Pokemon. Easy win. Nice, nice, nice. So we can cut that. Cool. So now, of course, Grimer is no longer useful to us. Deposit Grimer here. And we're going to withdraw our Raticates. Oh, and uh, we're going to withdraw TM39 here. And uh, here, what we're going to do is we're going to teach TM39, which is Swift to Raticate. Uh, we'll teach it over Focus Energy, since Focus Energy is trash. And we've made it to Sabrina. So we're going to start by just spamming Super Fang and just hoping to get Flash here. Like ideally, she gets us to minus six accuracy just so that we get all the badge boosts. Okay, we knocked that one out. Now we'll just go Swift. Not quite a one hitter, but we do get a Kinesis there, so that's fine. And now the Alakazam is an easy two hit KO. Raticate destroys Sabrina. One of the easiest ways to get through Sabrina is simply to come in with Eradicate that knows Swift. So now we need to take out old uh, Blaney boy here. Let's see. So I want to fly right over here because I have a plan and we're going to uh, surf on Slowbro here. Let's just pop one of these super repels for a minute. Okay, so we get the super rod right there. We're looking for a level 40 star you. There it is. There we go. Level 40 star you in the bag. All right, so now we can dig out. We're going to fly back to Cinnabar and we want that level 40 star you. Let's see, first things first, we need something to defeat Blaney boy, but I don't know. I have another idea very quickly. Sorry, we're just looking for a tentacle. Cause that gets us a tentacruel, right? I mean, in theory, we can go grab a different physical attacking move. But first, let's just try Blaine with our Tentacruel. Okay. So here, we're going to lead off with Barrier here, hoping to get enough badge boost that I just outspeed. And okay, that's a critical hit. We're outspeeding here. Fire spin, but we managed to survive. Here, we're outspeeding there. We're very close to getting through with this Tentacruel here. Okay, we get a Tail Whip, so we get a barrier up here. We're basically just going to try to outspeed, and then it looks like a two-hitter to knock out Ninetales. We outspeed here. It's a two-hitter to knock out Rapidash. Takedown doesn't mean that much because we got the barrier set up, and there we go. We win against Blaine with a Tentacruel using barrier strats. Easy game. Easy, easy game. So now we need to take on Giovanni's gym. And this is where I have a plan. There he is. Parasect time. So here, I think if we just drop three rare candies there, we get Spore. Yes, I think we just learned that over Leech Life. I think with Spore, we have a decent chance against Giovanni himself based on... Our typing kind of messes with Giovanni's AI. So we can just bypass there. 
And here we are. We've made it to Giovanni. Let's go. So here against Giovanni, first things first, Doug Trio is going to use Dig. It's going to do basically nothing because, um, like, why would it do anything? Here, I'm going to use some sword stances to boost my speed or my special. Okay. And we don't really care too much about his attacks because we can just do that. Perfect. So now we're once again going to spore right here. Going solar beam strats here. Looks like a four hitter. Screech is fine. Here we're just going for some uh, solar beams. Here the problem is we don't have enough PP. Okay. So we might need to... Uh, Go get an actual physical attacking move. So here, we're simply going to forget Mega Drain in lieu of learning Dig. Just because Dig is super effective against the Nidos, so it, it makes perfect sense. Okay, let's save. Now oh, we get exactly to uh, the same speed as last time, so we need a, a miss, I think. Oh, we guard specs. Oh, legend. And so we beat Giovanni with our Parasect. Easy, easy game. Easy, easy game. All right, so with Parasect taking down Giovanni, we have only one Pokemon left for the rest of the run. We're going to put Parasect away. You did your job, buddy. The legendary Staryu must come out, though. And now it's time to give this Staryu a moveset for the ages. So, of course, Star you can learn Psychic as well as Thunderbolt. So here, let's teach our Star you Thunderbolt. We want this to be, of course, a Star Me. And the whole idea here is that we have Harden, we have Recover, so we can recover HP. And I think, you know, the Harden is also going to give us badge boost, so kind of puts us in a good situation, I think. But here, let's start off by testing here got to take on rival number six here and we've got a couple of moves for coverage so we should be doing pretty darn well i think but let's just see okay that's scary that slash is scary yeah if you just go slash slash we get wrecked so but yeah we're trying to set up the hardens here on the first sand slash psychic here appears to be a two hit KO. Nice. Psychic here. We get wrecked by the solar beam there. Okay. So we clearly need more badge boost first. Psychic. One shot. Cool. Psychic. Okay, he leech seeds, but I think that's okay. Thunderbolt's on the cloister. Oh, we got a gen one miss with psychic. Are you kidding me? Come on. We got a gen one miss with psychic there. That was stupid. Come on. Come on, come on. We get wrecked there because we level up right there in the fight. Okay, so now I'm just wondering if we start popping rare candies right here. What does that do for us? We get to level 43 right there. So let's just uh, backtrack very quickly because we can always get thunder. Seems to me like Ice Beam is a far more logical play here. You know, like Thunderbolts isn't really as useful, I think, as Ice Beam here. Because now, let's see. We go into this fight here with the Ice Beam. It's nearly a one-shot right there. And Execute, also nearly a one-shot. So, we, in theory, don't have to set up all the badge boosts here now. Just a couple. And we should be one-shotting the first two Pokemon. So... Here we just go Harden, Harden, Ice Beam. Okay, that is a one hitter there. One hitter there. We can go Psychic right there, which is like a two hitter, cool. And there we go, we take down the Flareon, very nice, okay. So we do manage to get through there. I mean, we're to the league, it's taken a couple hours. It's probably not the most ideal route, don't get me wrong, but we have used a different Pokemon to beat every single gym leader. And now we're taking Starmie as our final Pokemon to the Elite Four. 
All right, so here we are. We have made it to the Indigo Plateau. I'm just going to heal up here very quickly just so that it's easy to come back here. First things first, let's learn this Thunder move here. We can forget Ice Beam. We have Blizzard for later. Let's go ahead and fight Lorelei. So here I'm going to lead off with Harden. Here I'm just going to recover. Okay, that's a one hitter. That's a one hitter. Here we can just recover. Withdraw means nothing. That's a one hitter. We leveled up right there. Here we can just recover. Thrashing. Get a special drop right there. Oh, she gets the critical hit with Lapras. A non-critical hit doesn't matter because we've got all the Harden set up. Oh man, that was that was stupid. Like, come on, you don't have to critical hit me. Come on. Okay, psychic and psychic. Easy win. Thunder. One shots. She used amnesia. So that becomes a two hitter. Here, let's just see. Okay, we get a special drop there. She goes thrash. We're just stacking special drops though. Thunder. And there we go. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. Lorelei goes down. No problem. No problem. Let's fight this guy. So here strategy, I'm just going to set up Harden first for badge boosts. We're not really scared of anything other than critical hits once we get all the badge boosts up. And now we just start spamming Psychic, I think, for the rest of the fight. We should be fast enough, even without the badge boost, we should be fast enough. And the Harden just makes it so that we can't really easily be knocked out. He acts defense. Yeah, <laughs> good job, Bruno. Good job, Bruno. You had one shot to hit me and he doesn't even hit me. And this is all about Psychic too. So let's just see. Agatha, Agatha, Agatha. All right, so Agatha time. We are going to start off by not liking that Mega Drain, that's for sure. But one badge boost is enough to outspeed the Gengar here. So we just got to keep that in mind. She can go substitute. She can go um, lick, which doesn't damage us. She can do a lot of things. Here, I'm just going to recover. Here, harden and then recover. Thunder. Come on, Thunder. There we go. Finally lands. So we leveled up right there. Okay, so we knocked that one out, good. Now, Haunter is a lot less scary because Lick doesn't affect us. Oh, we just one-shot the Arbok. Um, I'm just gonna finish all my setup here. Okay, Confuse Ray is kind of fine because even if we hit ourselves in Confusion, it's not gonna do as much. And we've made it to Gengar. Psychic's not gonna do that much unless it's a critical hit. Are you kidding me? Double critical hit from her Gengar. That was stupid, stupid. We had it. Okay, so one Harden there. Then I think we just Psychic. Don't like that Mega Drain. Come on. There we go. Psychic. Psychic just one shots there. Cool. We're going to recover again. And here we're basically just trying to recover. Okay, we get paralyzed, which sucks. But now we can't be put to sleep. Okay, so we knock out the Haunter this time. Gengar uses Psychic, but it's a non-crit this time. And there we go. Now she goes down. See? She's just being a troll. <laughs> she's a cakewalk, you know, if she's just not ridiculous. Okay, so now we no longer need Thunder, so we're going to replace that with Blizzard. But let's just think here for a second. Thunder is actually useful here because we can use it to take out the um, Gyarados. But we do want Blizzard no matter what. So here, I'm going to learn Blizzard over Psychic, actually. Now I'm going to drop PP ups into Blizzard. Let's save the game right there. Let's get into this fight. All right, so here we go. I'm going to lead off with Harden here. Keep in mind, we can always recover the damage that's dealt to us. Okay, it has to recharge. Hyper Beams again. As long as it doesn't crit with Hyper Beam, we're basically golden here. Okay, it's using Leer, which just lets us set up even more badge boosts. Gotta land the thunder here, come on. Okay, we don't one-shot there with the blizzard because we leveled up. 
So this is a clear spot to uh, throw on a rare candy. We still have two in the bag. We're gonna heal up there and harden again. Can heal up there, harden again, and harden again. Okay, a non-critical hit hyper beam won't knock us out. Okay, so we knock out Gyarados. Oh, come on, we missed the blizzard. I'm just resetting there. When I'm paralyzed, I'm not gonna sit here and just try to try to get lucky. Air harden, harden. There we land the blizzard, good. Okay, we missed blizzard here, but that's okay. Okay, Aerodactyl, Blizzard, and now Dragonite, Blizzard. There we go, and we have the perfect amount of XP to get just to level 49 here, which means now we can simply drop the last two rare candies, and let's get into the champion fight. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna just try Blizzard there. It works. Okay, we get a Kinesis right away from the Alakazam. Here, I'm actually gonna reset right here. So let's harden up here first. Okay, if he goes Slash, we have to recover, obviously. Earthquake as well. We want something other than Slash or Earthquake, clearly. Come on, he can use Poison Sting. There's nothing stopping him from just being bad until we can at least set up some of these hardens. Okay, Fury Swipes is perfect. We really just don't want Slash. That's it. Oh, we got a non-critical hit Slash. That's very rare. Oh, but then he gets the critical hit Earthquake. Come on. Come on. Like, I know he's always going to crit with Slash, basically. Like, that was like a Gen 1 miss, basically, that he, he didn't crit with Slash there, but... Like, he shouldn't be getting this many critical hits, and he always does. Okay, we're so close to knocking this one out. But I think we have to recover here. Oh, we're running low on PP, too. Okay, we hit there. Oh, come on. And we miss everything on the final Flareon. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to get to struggle to take that one down. Like, we missed two Surfs in a row on that one. That was stupid. Come on, freeze it. Okay, let's get back to full health here, at least. No crit, please. Please, no crit. Okay, we have no accuracy drops this time, which is pretty huge. Okay, Surf. Back to the Flareon. Quick attack doesn't do that much because... Oh, he gets the critical hit quick attack when we would have knocked him out. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. It's only a 12.9% chance to get a critical hit there. That is stupid, stupid. He was he was going down that turn, if not for that. That's what's stupid about it. Zane, you're you're too broken, man. I'm telling you now. You know, and then my moves are missing, and I'm not getting the freeze, even though I've been sitting here using Blizzard on him for the last half hour. I've gotten exactly one freeze. Are you kidding me? Like that, that is stupidly bad luck. It's supposed to be 10% to freeze, guys. Come on. Oh, see? <laughs> Complain about the RNG, you'll get the freeze. Same here, I've been trying to use it on the Exeggutor this whole time. Exeggutor has never been frozen this whole time. Okay, so we knocked that one out. Okay, I'm just like holding my breath here because I keep getting critical hits when I don't want them. Okay, but we do knock that one out. We level up. He goes quick attack. Now this time, don't crit. There we go. Finally. It took almost three hours, but we did manage to beat the game. We got terrible luck there on the champion at the end. That was just bad. That was just bad, bad. But there we go. We have beaten the game on Baton Pass. Minimum battles, zero DVs. Level 52 finally at the end for our strongest Pokemon. And uh, yeah, so that does it, guys. Uh, that was a grind. There were parts of that that I definitely did not enjoy. But let's just recap very quickly. So what we did, for Brock, we used Trainer Fly to get Gengar. Perfect solution for him. It's very consistent. You simply 
Trainer Fly fights the junior trainer in his gym, faint against the very first Diglett. You can get the Gengar 100% of the time. Then Trainer Fly for Slowbro. Pretty good Pokemon for the next section. Then we get Drowsy, which is a normal encounter. You want to get a level 19 Drowsy because it will already know Confusion and Hypnosis. You can then start making your way through all of the middle game, including all of Sylphco. And then you go down and you fight Koga with that Drowsy, take down that badge. Then you can backtrack. Doug Trio is more than enough to take on Lieutenant Surge. I mean, even a level 22 Diglett's enough for him. For Erica, there are a lot of options. I ended up going Grimer, but Muck would have been better. You can also use the Haunter that I caught and never used. Perfectly good Pokemon for that section. Then against Sabrina, get the level 43 Raticate from the Pokemon Mansion. Teach it Swift. It's a perfect Pokemon to take her out. Then against the Blaine fight, I caught a level 35 Tentacool. Evolved it by giving it a single rare candy into a tender cruel, taught his surf, barrier and surf, more than enough to get through that fight very consistently. Then we actually leveled up with the Parasect that we caught from the Safari Zone at level 27. We leveled it up just a little bit so that it would get access to Spore. Once it has Spore, things perfectly solid for getting through Giovanni. You know, there was a little bit of randomness, but with Spore, Ultimately, it worked out. You do want to have a physical attacking move. Dig is a great move to use there. And then it's star me the rest of the way. You just use the rare candies in order to level it up. You know, it has a wide enough move pool. It learns everything it needs. So it gets through the end game. So have fun. Try it. <laughs> Tell me a different strategy that works. I would love to do this someday as like a community race where we just like have people submit their own sections and then we just put them all together into a big community video tell me what you think anyway that does it for this one guys see you in the next one later